Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm Darren McBreen. It is Thursday, August 6, 2015, and here is a quick look at what's coming up. Tonight, it's a dog and pony show as the presidential pageant begins. Then, with schools banning sack lunches, we ask the question, how healthy is cafeteria food? and Al Sharpton's <clears throat> Media Watch Group. That's next on the InfoWars Nightly News. In fact, I meant to get to Al Sharpton. Let's talk about the FBI rat demon uh, who helps set people up and who loves the fact that half the black folks, I mean, not even Pharaoh could get that done with the Israelites. He couldn't kill half their sons. Half of the black people in this country have not been born, and, he, and I guess he just thinks that's a great thing. So tell us about Al Sharpton. What most people don't know about the Reverend Al Sharpton is that he was once a cocaine dealer who turned into an FBI informant after federal agents caught him on camera negotiating a coke deal. Our president doesn't have a clue. He's a bad negotiator. They really, I think they made a mistake, but not with Obama, because he's weak and he's ineffective, and he's not respected. When President Obama was elected, I said, well, the one thing I think he'll do well, I think he'll be a great cheerleader. He's not a leader, that's true. You're right about that. But he wasn't a cheerleader. He's actually a negative force. It's been a negative force. Well, tonight is the season opener of the 2016 presidential race as the Republican Party debate takes place just a couple hours in Cleveland, Ohio. And this will set the stage for the remainder of the campaign. At the top, right out of the starting gates, is Donald Trump, who is way ahead of the pack and at the center of attention right now as the nation waits to see what he will say next. The fact that Donald Trump has a substantial lead, well, that means that he will dominate the debate tonight on Fox News. And I thought it was interesting that Trump was not invited to a Koch Brothers event in California earlier this week, sort of a, an audition, if you will, for mega donations. By the way, I understand that Jeb Bush had a very good day, as we all know that the Koch Brothers Love them some Jeb Bush. But Trump was not invited. And he wasted little time criticizing his rivals on Twitter, saying, I wish good luck to all of the Republican candidates that traveled to California to beg for money, etc., from the Koch brothers. Puppets? <laughs> you got to admit that's kind of funny. And Trump has said from the very beginning that he wants campaign finance reform. He says that having lots of money is okay, but it's important to know where all that money is coming from. That way we know who is controlling each candidate and each politician. Makes sense to me, and I think it's part of the reason why Trump is so popular right now. Yes, Donald Trump is a billionaire, but he seems to appeal to us common folk because, well, let's face it, uh, the guy speaks his mind. That and the fact that most people figure if he could successfully run a big business, maybe, just maybe, he can save the country from economic disaster. And with us now is best-selling author and historian Jim Mars. And I'm glad you're here today because I want to get your take on Donald Trump. He's the talk of the town. We got the GOP debates tonight. He's not the establishment candidate. But do you think he's got a chance to actually pull this thing off and become president of the United States of America? Uh, he's got just as much chance as Ross Perot or, <laughs> or Ron Paul. And in fact, the thing that worries me is, is that I think uh, uh, he's being used and set up as a straw man so that he brings up some of the topics like immigration, uh, Obama's background, things like this, that really do need to be addressed and looked at. But they're going to, coming from him, they're going to just, you know, tear it all down because it comes from him and then knock those issues out of the park. And then he's already, he's already stated that uh, if the Republican Party doesn't treat him fairly, whatever that means, that he's going to start a third party. And so that means we're going to see what we've seen in the past, which is the conservative vote gets split, the Democrats win. 
Yeah, and I'm all for third-party candidates. I think that's I a good too. idea. But I, this is what I expect to see tonight from Fox News. I think that after the show, they're going to send in a, a lineup of political pundits and these guys are probably going to downgrade uh, Trump's performance. Mm -hmm. They're going to give Jeb Bush, the establishment candidate, they're going to give him high marks. And it's because it's the establishment's job to tell the mainstream media, basically to sick the mainstream media on whoever, like someone like Donald Trump. That way the establishment media can tell us who is the winner and who's not. And I think the argument they're going to use is they're going to say, well, Donald Trump, you know, he, he's interesting, but he's too radical. You know? Exactly. He's too uh, radical. And, and we have to go for someone with a steadier hand. You know, you watch. That'll be the that'll be the argument. Well, and if Trump starts winning these polls, they could do to him just like what they did to Ron Paul. They'll, they'll quit broadcasting the poll <laughs> results hear, altogether. You won't even hear about you it. You won't hear about those polls anymore. No. Well, hey, uh, while you're here, I want to talk about your book, Population Control, how corporate owners are killing us. And this population control, does it also mean politician control and candidate control? <laughs> oh, well, pilot, politician control has been happening for a long time. You know, yeah. uh, it's interesting in uh, the fascist Italy and Nazi Germany, the, the state gained control over the corporations. And it was that combination of state corporate power that's the very definition of fascism. Well, in modern America, the corporations have gained control over the state. That's right. End result's the same, you know? <laughs> yeah, the end result is exactly the same. Now, I say how corporate owners are killing us. First, understand, I'm not talking about people that work for the corporations. I'm not even talking about presidents or vice presidents. They, for the most part, are just able administrators. I'm talking about the people at the very, very top whose names we rarely even hear who are making the decisions, okay, that give us bad food, bad water, bad air, Okay, and their whole purpose is to reduce the human population because they feel like overpopulation is the underlying problem in the world. Okay, it's it's a phony, it's a false uh, argument, but that but that's what they think. So, folks, this is getting beyond politics and beyond uh, philosophies. This is self defense. You better learn what they're putting in your food and your water and your air you know, so that you can protect you and your loved ones. Well, absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And why won't someone like you run for president? Don't, don't tell me that whole JFK <laughs> thing's got you scared. <laughs> hey, if I got to be president, I wouldn't last a day. <laughs> and that's what I think is going to happen with Donald Trump. I, I don't think his life is at risk, but no. because he's outside of the establishment, basically they're going to, it's going to be a slow kill. And just like I said, Fox news and all the other political pundits across the board, both left and right news media, they're going to start saying, look, he is too radical, just like you were saying, and he's not the man for the job. Am I right? Right. That's right. And, uh, but what I've seen, uh, well, going all the way back to actually, I guess, to the election of uh, 1912, where uh, uh, Howard Taft had said he would never sign the Federal Reserve Act. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And Woodrow Wilson said, well, I will. Okay, and so the majority of people were for Taft. So what happens? They ran Teddy Roosevelt on the Bull Moose Party, a third party. He split the votes, and Woodrow Wilson got in, and we got the Federal Reserve. Well, the more things change, the more they stay the same. That's right. Real quick, where can we get this book? And you know I'm an audio book guy. Where can I get the audio book? You can get the audio book at Amazon.com. You can get it at any bookstore. And I think you can get it at my website, JimMars.com. Jim All right, my friend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, folks, and be sure to check out Infowars.com for all of the post-debate analysis of all the candidates. We'll rate their performances, and I'm sure you'll be able to see highlights uh, from the debates tomorrow on the Alex Jones Show, hosted by David Knight. And Donald Trump, you know, he's going to be center stage. Meanwhile, here's a preview of what you might expect to see tonight on The Trump Show. Politicians are all talk, no action. Most of them don't know what they're doing. They just could run. They like, change, you know, like you wind them up and they run for office. They're controlled fully by the lobbyists, by the donors, and by the special interests, fully. And again, I respect Mexico, but their leaders are too smart for our leaders because we have stupid leaders, okay? Free trade can be wonderful if you have smart people, but we have people that are stupid. Jeb Bush, let's say he's president. Ay, ay, ay.
Hillary Clinton was the worst Secretary of State in the history of the United States. Hillary Clinton's going to be a horrible president. Bush is totally in favor of Common Core. I don't see how he can possibly get the nomination. He's weak on immigration. He's in favor of Common Core. How the hell can you vote for this guy? And I'm tied with Jeb Bush. And I said, oh, that's too bad. How can I be tied with this guy? He's terrible. When President Obama was elected, I said, well, the one thing I think he'll do well, I think he'll be a great cheerleader. He's not a leader, that's true. You're right about that. But he wasn't a cheerleader. He's actually a negative force. I mean, right here in your own state, you have John McCain. Hillary is weak on immigration. Hillary would let everybody come in, killers, criminals, drug dealers, Everybody, if you listen to Hillary, everybody is going to be flowing through the nation. They are sort of now anyway. Our president doesn't have a clue. He's a bad negotiator. Who would you rather have negotiating a deal, a trade deal, with anybody? Trump or Hillary? You looked at Bush, it took him five days to answer the question on Iraq. He couldn't answer the question, he didn't know. I said, is he intelligent? I was coming up and I see your senator. What a stiff, what a stiff. Lindsey Graham. They got Reverend Al Sharpton working for him. Okay. He's actually not a bad guy. He's a con man. You have to understand it. Reverend Al is a con man. You know, tells people I'm going to pick at you if you don't give. I mean, this guy is a con man. And then I, I see uh, Rick Perry the other day, and he's so, you know, he's doing very poorly in the polls. He put glasses on so people will think he's smart. And it's, it just doesn't work. I don't think they're that smart to be bad people. I just think, honestly, I mean, a lot of people get angry when I say, I don't think they're bad. I think they're stupid. I think they're incompetent. Are you going to be watching the GOP debates tonight? I might, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sure, yeah. You going to be watching the debates tonight? Uh, I'm not from here. Where are you from? Massachusetts. You guys could turn it into a drinking game. That's true. It could be a drinking game. Shots every time Trump says something outrageous. I would be drunk in two seconds. <laughs> well, I'm betting that there's going to be a lot of uses of the word freedom, um, some jokes about Bernie Sanders' haircut, and I'm sure a lot of jabs at Hillary. But that's not really fair because Donald Trump's hair is like... Ironic. They get to now dictate the 10 most important people and what poll was used to come up with that solution and, and who, who are they to be the ones that you know, allows our country uh, or, or, or pick and choose who the main candidates will be. So I'm a little disappointed in that. I hope there's an articulate debate on they've all come out against the Iran deal. So I would like to see what options they propose and put forth as opposed to just being a group of naysayers. Let, let's support better education. <laughs> they promise all the time. I wonder where it all goes. Save our teachers and our education. Yeah. The war in Syria, the a lot of the stuff going on in the Middle East, the entire um, Iran nuclear deal, stuff like that. I think we need a third party to come in and kind of mess things up because they don't touch certain things when it's just the two sides and nothing gets done. Ooh, I, I have one that can see. <laughs> what do you think if America elected Donald Trump? I think that'd be madness. You watch, he's going to be the president of the United States. They want change. What, what more change can you, what are you going to put Governor Christie in there? We won't have any donuts left in the United yeah. States. you got to have a good president. Somebody that knows business, and Donald Trump knows business. And we're all from Wisconsin, so we get a lot of Walker up there. Uh, I think Trump is, he'd be good in some ways, but he may be a little bit too open-minded or open-mouthed for, uh, for a president. So uh, we'll yeah. see. Bernie, um, I'm currently kind of on his side. I like him more. I feel like he's, I mean, Hillary's good. I wouldn't mind her being president. I think she knows what she's doing. We love entertainers here. Yeah, he's a fool though. You can't have him run the country. <laughs> Entertainment is not what you need. You need someone sensible that knows what they're doing. He doesn't. He's an alright guy. How would you feel if America elected Donald Trump as president? If he makes that golf course, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he's doing it for his own, to further expand his wealth and just kind of push his own agenda rather than the people's agenda, really. I think Americans seem to be responding to that open mouth. Yeah, and I think it, probably because they're sick of 
uh, or they like the transparency at least. We don't get that. They haven't gotten that for a while. So. What are some socialist countries that you think are a success? I mean, I'm not sure to be honest. I mean, I haven't. I mean, right now, I'm, I'm not sure. Probably if like I actually looked it up, I could probably tell you. Let's say it came down to Bernie Sanders and Donald Trump. What do you think America looks like then? I think America looks a lot smaller because a lot of people are moving to Canada. Any predictions? No, no predictions. Just interested to see what they all have to say. What, what do you hope? the lunacy begin. Predictions. What do you think is going to happen tonight? I think that tonight is the night that Trump's hairdo is finally going to change and the American people are going to truly live in democratic society. <laughs> You think so, finally, think once so. in change, finally. real change? Real change is coming with his hair. All right, folks, we're going to take a quick break right now. The InfoWars Nightly News will return. When we come back, we are going to take a look at Michelle Obama's disgusting student lunch program. Uh, you, you don't want to miss this. It's very important. Check it out. We'll be right back. Fool me once. Shame on you. Fool me twice. Shame on me. Vote for Jeb, or you're just fucking stupid. Fool me, we can't get fooled again. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. All right, folks, we're going to switch gears right now because I want to talk about something that is very, very disgusting. In fact, if your stomach gets upset easily, you, you might not want to take a look at this because we're going to be talking about Michelle Obama's lunch program. What would you think I was going to say? It's no secret Michelle Obama's interference in the nutrition, if you want to call it that, of our school children nationwide well, it has become a total and utter joke and a failure. Reports continue to come in on Facebook and Twitter and other social media about how awful the food is. And now, to add insult to injury, a clinical dietitian has come forward claiming that Michelle Obama's federal lunch program is causing cancer. Most school food is purchased through state and federal governments who in turn buy in bulk from big corporations. We showed McCoy and Hutchison a national doctor study claiming that major corporate food producers required to meet those same nutritional guidelines are profiteering by hundreds of millions of dollars, dominating school trade magazine ads, pushing nuggets, corn dogs, and pizza as supposedly nutritious meal mates. That's right, and students all across the country have been gagging on this prison-style food ever since it was introduced into the nation's school system. What are your kids eating for lunch? Well, if they're eating the Michelle Obama-backed federal lunch program, they're chowing down on carcinogenic processed meat that'll result in higher rates of cancer. That's according to clinician Daniel Jarvis, who says despite being labeled nutritious, the government is buying food in bulk from large corporations who are pushing nuggets, corn dogs, and pepperoni pizzas. Mm -mm. I see pepperoni and uh, processed meats um, uh, aren't very good for cancer if you eat a whole lot. Of it. It's kind of like a a scheme to make money. These corporations are profiteering by hundreds of millions of dollars while stuffing lunches with junk food. You've seen the photos. For well over a year, American school kids have been tweeting out images of bug-infested, moldy food under the hashtag, thanks Michelle Obama. Lunches are also served in extremely small portions. No doubt those scant servings are the result of trying to keep sodium in the preservative-laden junk food at federally regulated levels. Joe Biden, our creepy vice president, who manages to put his foot in his mouth over and over again. I've had a great relationship. In Delaware, the largest growth in population is Indian Americans moving from India. You cannot go to a 7-Eleven or a Dunkin' Donuts unless you have a slight Indian accent. It's a point. I'm not joking. What difference at this point does it make? 
Joe Biden is being courted as Hillary Clinton's replacement to keep the globalist, banker-funded and dominated New World Order train rolling. According to Politico, Biden is a beloved figure in the Democratic Party, a real stand-up guy, and establishment Democrats want him in the wings if Clinton for some reason implodes, which appears increasingly likely as the former Secretary of State takes heat for the email and Benghazi scandals. If opinion polls can be believed, her unfavorability rating stands at 48.1%. Biden has enabled the disastrous drug war and played a key role in militarizing law enforcement. He considers domestic crime to be a national security issue on par with terrorism and worked hard in the Senate to push through draconian legislation, including mandatory minimum sentences and the creation of a cabinet-level drug czar. I'm not only the guy who did the crime bill and the drug czar, but I'm also the guy who spent years when I was chairman of the Judiciary Committee and chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee trying to change drug policy relative to cocaine, for example, crack and powder, Biden told Time in 2014. The crime bill that makes Joe Biden so great committed $10 billion in federal spending on prisons and $13 billion on local police. As a senator, Biden also pushed bills escalating the war on ecstasy and other club drugs, expanding asset forfeiture laws, and making the drug war more awful in any way he could imagine writes Ed Krayuski. Radley Balko, writing for the Washington Post, says, Biden has sponsored more damaging drug war legislation than any Democrat in Congress. Hate the way federal prosecutors use RICO laws to take aim at drug offenders? Think Biden. How about the abomination that is federal asset forfeiture laws? Think Biden. Think federal prosecutors have too much power in drug cases? Think Biden. Think the title of drug czar is sanctimonious and silly? Think Biden, who helped create the position and still considers it an accomplishment worth boasting about. Biden's handiwork and an escalation of the drug war throughout the 1990s are directly responsible for the militarized and killer cops now roaming the streets of America. Since 2001, the Department of Homeland Security has given out more than $34 billion in grants to police departments across the country allowing them to purchase military-grade weapons, including tanks, armor, and armored personnel carriers. The drug war and the concurrent war on terror serve as a paradigm for a totalitarian police state. Since September 11, 2001, the government has added an Orwellian surveillance grid to the mix. This apparatus is less concerned with drugs and terror than it is controlling the American people and targeting political enemies. Remarkably, Many Democrats consider this architect of the police state to be presidential material. Uh, the Morning.com essentially uh, has a scene of Bo Biden on his deathbed telling his father to run for president. They will fall in line behind him when a corruption and scandal-ridden Hillary Clinton is finally pushed aside. For the rulers of America, however, it doesn't matter if the candidate is Clinton or Biden or for that matter, Jeb Bush or any other vetted Republicans jostling for the nomination. The prospect of Joe Biden taking the Democrat nomination merely reaffirms the fact that the oligarchy in control of America prefers deeply corrupt politicians who can be trusted to carry out the police state New World Order agenda. John Bound for Infowars.com. A no-knock raid is something that has gained in popularity over the past several years. And while I'm sure the practice has netted many bad guys, it has also terrorized many innocent people, such as baby Bobo, who had half of his face blown off by a flashbang grenade. Not to mention the many people who have had the officers show up to the wrong address, and sometimes the officers themselves end up the victims. They enter a house at 3 in the morning, crashing through doors and windows, and rightfully so, the homeowner picks up a firearm to defend themselves. And beyond all that, you have the practice of swatting where gamers pull this prank, well, they'll call a police station and say, this gamer that I'm playing against has a household hostage with their weaponry. And of course, the police have to take this very seriously. They go and respond to the situation. Sometimes people get hurt, sometimes people don't. I'm gonna flash through your screen. I think you're getting swatted. What in the world? Get your hands up! Get your hands up! And now, for lack of a better term, swatting has happened to a police chief. A group of bounty hunters got a social media tip 
that a fugitive was hiding out in a police chief's home. Of course, this was not the case, and after they kicked in the door, they had to deal with the police chief after that. But it goes to show that not every tip is golden, that not every situation requires a SWAT team. And I hope that law enforcement can learn from this incident. You can find more reports on Infowars.com. Well, guess what I just found out? Al Sharpton, the Reverend Al, is about to make his internet debut. We're going to talk about it when we come back. He put together a media watchdog group. Wow. So we can all feel safer that the good old Reverend Al Sharpton is going to be out there monitoring the internet to make sure that we don't, well, we don't bash his Lord and Savior, Barack Hussein Obama. We'll be right back. Al Sharpton report right after this. Stick around. Well, it looks like the Reverend Al Sharpton is about to make his internet debut, so to speak, as he is getting ready to launch a media watchdog group called The Shift Daily. They're media watchdogs, and they're going to set the record straight. Apparently, this is a group that is going to look for any wrongdoing on the internet, and they are taking aim at conservatives who report on politics on the web. And it will offer an online counterattack against those who dare criticize our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Give an honor to God and our Lord and Savior, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. Y'all stand up right now. You gotta Thank you, Jamie Foxx. That was inspirational. And I think it really sets the tone for what we can expect to see on Al Sharpton's blog, a total Obama love fest. After all, it has done wonders for Al Sharpton's career. And, uh, you know, when you think about it, Al Sharpton's come a long way since his days as a cocaine dealer and FBI informant. And I bet a lot of you haven't heard about all that. Al Sharpton, drug dealer turned snitch who ratted out his friends in the mob. And if you haven't heard about all this, you are in luck because I'm about to tell you the whole story. So pull up a bar stool and let me tell you the tale of the chronic master race baiter, Al Sharpton. Since the Obama administration took over the White House, there has been a resurgence of civil rights activist Al Sharpton, one of Barack Obama's loudest cheerleaders. The Reverend now has his own TV show on MSNBC. He has his own talk radio show, a best-selling book, and is a regular at the White House. He hangs out with Obama's aides and cabinet members, members of Congress, business executives, military leaders, and the president himself. In fact, Sharpton had a choice seat for the president's inauguration. He attended Michelle Obama's 50th birthday party and even watched the Super Bowl with the Obama family. The president has sought the man's counsel and has embraced him publicly. But what most people don't know about the Reverend Al Sharpton is that he was once a cocaine dealer who turned into an FBI informant after federal agents caught him on camera negotiating a coke deal. Rather than face criminal charges, the Reverend panicked and agreed to become a snitch for the FBI. I mean, the guy is a complete joke. He is a race pimp and just a complete fraud. It's just so perfect uh, that they're reporting this about him because I'll guarantee you he was reporting on black people. I will guarantee you he wasn't allowed to pull the shenanigans he pulled and create the political diversions where he was acting like he was fighting the political establishment in New York without some serious backing. In April of 2014, the Smoking Gun released a lengthy investigation that uncovered remarkable details about Sharpton's past work as an informant for a joint organized crime task force comprised of FBI agents and NYPD detectives, as well as his dealings with an assortment of wise guys. Before hanging out at the White House, Sharpton surrounded himself with powerful mob bosses, mafia figures with nicknames like Benny Eggs, Baldy Dom, and The Chin. Once he was flipped by the FBI, he ratted these guys out and even helped take down the Genovese crime family, the largest mafia outfit in the country. Early this morning, North Jersey, 
Operation Intrepid is underway. Tommy Pee Wee DePhillips arrested at his home. One of 41 elected leaders and associates of the Genovese organized crime family operating in northern New Jersey that were rounded up today by New Jersey State Police. Toronto and the others are charged with running a million dollar a week racketeering operation centered in, but not limited to, the Newark area. Using bugs and a video camera, cops were able to see and record the group's daily activities, which included at times running a casino there. The grand jury has been hearing evidence against the Toronto faction and indictments are expected. While secretly working for the FBI, Al Sharpton became a well-known civil rights activist and public figure. He received widespread media attention and national recognition in the late 1980s for his role in the Tawana Brawley rape allegations. After a 15-year-old teenager claimed she was gang raped by a group of white police officers. Tawana Brawley is a 16-year-old girl whose story is the talk of New York these days. The New York State teenager who claims that she was abducted and raped by six white men. Tawana Brawley became a household name and Al Sharpton became her spokesperson. We want to show the world how low down dogged and callous the state of New York yes. is. The case quickly generated a national media sensation because of her age, the persons accused, and the shocking state in which Brawley was found after her alleged rape. Tawana Brawley said they left her nearly dead, a gang of white men who raped her and scrawled racial epithets on her body. A hideous story, and all this year, her family and her advisors have embellished it and refused to cooperate with an investigation they say is a cover-up. But it wasn't long before a grand jury determined that the entire story was a hoax. Tawana Brawley fabricated her claims to avoid punishment for staying out late. There is no evidence of her being kidnapped and zero forensic evidence of any kind of sexual attack. I have not deceived my family, my advisors, and most of all, my people. Oh. The accused were completely exonerated and Tawana Brawley's attorneys lost their license to practice law. In and around the area of America, civil rights has been seriously damaged. Uh, I think that uh, Maddox and Mason, uh, two of the most uh, cynically evil characters to have ever operated or pretend to operate under the Civil Rights Banner. Uh, the Reverend Sharpton has done some good things in the past. I feel very bad for him that he allowed himself to be so deeply involved in the fraud. No justice! No justice! No justice! The public has been had. I mean, he did it good. I mean, they've been had. They've been had. That's a lot of crap. Now look, brother, you have your time. That's a lot of crap. Brother, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Sharpton and people like him are known historically for constantly, constantly uh, trying to uh, play on our differences rather than our commonalities. Hit it, hit it, hit it. The Reverend Al Sharpton is now accused of not paying taxes and stealing $250,000 from a charity group. In Manhattan Supreme Court, Reverend Sharpton was formally accused of taking in more than a quarter million dollars for his national youth movement. The money allegedly was donated over a three-year period to support youth programs, but State Attorney General Robert Abrams says lots of that cash went into Al Sharpton's pocket. Yeah, so many Mr. Dr. King has so your charges gone. Where's all of the mob money? Where's the tickets go? This is disappointing. That's what you can do The public is manipulated, and people like Al Sharpton, opportunists, blood-sucking opportunists, are the ones who do it. I was not and am not a rat. Al Sharpton was a cocaine-dealing wannabe thug, you know, and he flipped over to the FBI only to save his own ass. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now that the cat is out of the bag, or, or the rat is out of the bag, I guess you could say, he has taken this position where he is publicly portraying him, himself as, as some sort of Elliot Ness. Look how he's rewarded. This guy has been rewarded big time, and on top of that, is, is, is uh, shown as being, quote, a leader. 
He's a misleader. For longtime observers of Al Sharpton's checkered past and criminal activities, it remains a mystery how he is still a prominent figure in the national spotlight. One has to wonder if he ever fully escaped the grip of the FBI or if he has now become an agent provocateur for the globalist. After all, Al Sharpton has secured his role as an antagonist and a race baiter for the Obama administration. Nice try, but we got you. On yesterday's syndicated radio slash TV transmission, I broke down a detailed report on what I dubbed Operation Chaos, how all over the Western world, the elites are encouraging illegal populations to flood in with the promise of free welfare, free health care, have your babies for free, everything else. We talked about cities in California, like Huntington Park, that is appointing to key commissions illegal aliens to run major city departments who don't even have their credentials on top of the fact that they're breaking the law. This is sedition. This is treason by the ultra elite with the outnumbering giant third world populations. And if you look at the parallels with Rome, Caesars, Roman emperors later towards the decline, would actually bring in mercenary armies and mercenary worker groups to displace and control politically Romans. That ended up bringing down Rome. And now in Italy, in France, in the UK, in Greece especially, we showed you the New York Times article yesterday, uh, it is a full-scale, again, what was the term that was used? Full-scale disaster, the New York Times said, while they promote the policies of all this free welfare that helps cause this and not deporting the lion's share of these people. The world is collapsing. This is only going to get worse, but the globalists will always offer their solution, giving them more taxes, more power, more police state control, which they then don't even use to secure the borders, the wealth, and the sovereignty. We need the West to stay incredibly wealthy, powerful, innovative, and then transfer technology to the third world and build tourist destinations and economic development zone destinations inside third world nations to build them up. Now, that's the public promotion for 60 years of globalism. They said that, and it made sense, but they haven't delivered. Instead, it's about keeping them poor, it's about exploiting them, it's about deindustrializing them, it's about sowing destabilization. This has all been declassified. That's why they fund ISIS to run around the whole Middle East, and now if Syria dares fight back against ISIS that's being immigrated in by the globalists, they're going to bomb them starting next week. War has been declared against Syria unofficially. That just shows you the order out of chaos mentality. But Rob Dew was able to get footage, and so was I, of just hordes of illegals just sitting around doing nothing, collecting their welfare checks all over Rome. Uh, I was able to get a demonstration basically against the open borders and other issues and what's happening economically on tape as well. So we're going to roll some of that footage uh, here in a moment, and I'm going to be basically narrating over it. But I know you as a listener and a viewer already understand these basics. We've got to get the word out to other people. But this isn't about being nice to the third world that we're doing this. This is being done to economically drive down wages. This is being done to make us poor, all of us, so we can be more politically managed. This is the admitted plan. And it's a revolution where you get the book thrown at you if you're a Hispanic American, a black American, a white American, an unhyphenated American. If you're an American, you get screwed over. You're known as a chump. But the illegals are above the law and can now be on the city council, just be appointed. It's wrong. It's discriminatory. And no one else puts up with this. Basically, our political immune system has been removed. America and the West has its shields completely down and are being subdivided, are having any original cultures erased and destroyed. So this whole plastic, artificial, matrix-like system of control 
can be overlaid over it. And that's really the story here. You know, they say Rome is collapsing economically and falling apart and rotting outside the tourist areas. We've been out there and seen it for ourselves. It's not just Rome is collapsing. It's all of America. It's all of Europe. It's all of the West because we've been sold out by political interests that want us poor, that want us dumb because they have diplomatic immunity. They have governmental and corporate reservations that are above the law and exempt from everything they're doing that are safe. And as long as the elites don't have to abide by the same laws, don't have to pay the same taxes, don't have to drink the same water, we're screwed. I mean, it's in the news for a decade that the Chinese elite, the German elite, the British elite, the U.S. elite, the Japanese elite don't take vaccines or they get special secret lots that are, quote, safe and clean. They don't drink fluoride water. They don't eat GMO. They have the secret gardens all over the world. It's even come out in mainstream news where, where, where they are producing for the Chinese elite and others clean food. The, the New World Order is like 100 Manhattan projects using our money, our ingenuity, compartmentalized, to set up a whole new world for the establishment, uh, an Elysium for the demigods that they want to become. And then we get nothing. Only by admitting what's going on outside of the controlled matrix-like media, only by getting outside the bread and circuses of the modern circus maximuses and the modern coliseums, only by getting outside... Of that will we regain our humanity and the mystery and the majesty that is the universe all around us. That's how we transcend these people is realizing there's a whole world of mystery and a universe of mystery around us, but the globalists are no mystery. You know, I mean, I talk about Manhattan projects, 100 plus thousand people involved for four or five years, kept it secret, no problem until they wanted to ad admit the A-bomb production out in New Mexico and other areas. I've known since I got on air 20 years ago, I was told by high-level pro-lifers and others and saw documents and lawsuits that were going on, how they were vivisecting and keeping babies alive and selling their parts. And, and now it's in the news. People say, oh, so what, kill babies? Well, you know what, so what, kill you? You know what, so what, harvest you? You know what, go ahead and kill veterans. Go ahead and kill old people. They'll kill you too, you dumb punks. You don't have any empathy and you don't demand standards. You don't stand up for other people getting screwed over. You're going to get screwed over. Everything the New World Order does is pure death. And it's not going to help the poor people fleeing collapsing Middle East and fleeing collapsing Africa and everywhere else. You got to fix the new world order that's screwing these countries over. You got to stop globalism that's meant to create a cascade of global crises that bring in total world domination, a world cashless society, a total control grid. I'm going to throw it back to David Knight and the InfoWars crew doing a fabulous job in Austin, Texas. Uh, today, we're going out to talk about the Vatican, to research sites around Rome and the Vatican and bring you a lot of key info because the globalists are making their move. Obama calling for world government, the Pope calling for world government, carbon taxes. They've gone from this doesn't exist to the emerger point where they decloak to fire. We've always said for over a decade, and all the experts have agreed, that when they start admitting all this stuff out in the open while they denied it behind the scenes, we're in deep trouble. But it's an opportunity because finally, folks, we can say, see, we told you, we wrote books, we made films, exactly as we said now happening, here's the documents, don't live in denial, we can do something, we can say no, we can withdraw our consent, we can vote with our dollars. It's an epic time to be alive. I, in my gut, I knew that traveling to Europe to investigate this for myself was key. i uh, been here a long time ago, but hadn't been to this area in a long time other than the UK. We're here now. And I'm going to be traveling more, a few times a year at least, to Asia and to Africa and to Latin America so we can firsthand really get down in the weeds and break down exactly what's happening. So I'm about to go out. It's in the morning here. I'm about to go out, and we're just going to shoot tons of footage, interview people, see what we see. We've already run into demonstrations. We've already run into just all sorts of stuff. And this is what it's all about, true journalism, where we wear the truth on our sleeve, our bias to be honorable, where we're open about it, where we don't follow talking points. We follow history, our hearts, and the good conscience that the good Lord gave us. Alex Jones signing off for InfoWars.com from Rome, Italy. All right, that's going to do it for tonight's broadcast. The InfoWars Nightly News will return tomorrow at 7 o'clock p.m. Central Time. Till then, I hope you all have a blessed evening. We'll see you back right here tomorrow night. Don't forget, InfoWars.com and the Alex Jones Show nationally syndicated broadcast tomorrow. Take care.